All right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and a happy Halloween week to you all. I'm going to do a tutorial today that felt pretty appropriate since I do love me some Halloween. And I'm going to use this awesome pumpkin model we have that you can actually get on our website, thehappytoolbox.com. If you go into our freebies section, go down here. Here it is right here. It's C4D, FBX, and OBJ file formats. And I'm gonna take that pumpkin and not using soft body tags and not using cloth tags, but just a standard C4D deformer and a few forces, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna make it explode. And so if this seems interesting to you enough to follow along, we're gonna hop right in. And if not, go ahead and download that pumpkin model and make something awesome with it and tag us on Instagram at the happy toolbox. All right, let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't already, go ahead and grab your pumpkin model. I grabbed the pumpkin hole model from that freebie that had two pumpkins inside of it. There's a few things we wanna to do to set the scene up. First and foremost is I want to control drag and duplicate this entire model and call this pumpkin clean, and then the other one pumpkin explosion. We're going to basically turn on and off these different pumpkins just so you don't have to deal with maybe if the geometry gets funky or um, you wanna do something extra special to the pumpkin for some secondary motion on the clean version. So it's always good to have a clean version of your model anyway. So I'm gonna leave that there, hide it, crack this open, and if I turn our subdivision editor off here and then I turn our display garage shading lines on, you can see like this is a pretty low geometry model as we normally do with our Happy Toolbox model packs. The thing with this effect is the more subdivisions you have on your geometry baked in, the stringier the explosion will become. And so it's totally okay if you wanna work at this low res, you know, maybe that fits your scene a certain way, but it'll look kind of blockier um, based upon this geometry than if you were to have some more geometry added. So what I want to do is I just wanna go one step up. So I'm gonna turn back on the subdivision surface. I'm going to turn the renderer and editor down to one. Now you can see I have a little bit of geometry going on. And then I'm actually going to stamp down this whole object by pressing C. So now I've baked that geometry into this object. Our top stem, our body, our bottom stem look pretty good. And then I'm also going to delete the bottom stem just for ease here. Um, you can't see it in what I'm going to show, so I'm just gonna delete it. From here, we want to select the faces that we want to kind of blow apart off of this pumpkin. And what I mean by that is we're actually going to select groups, and this is gonna take a tiny bit of time, so I'll probably speed ramp this, but you basically wanna select groups like so. Try to make sure they don't touch. Um, it's really whatever you want though. I mean, imagine this chunk is just gonna fly off, this chunk will fly off, and kind of any mesh or net you have, interconnected pieces you have in between this pumpkin will all kind of stay together, but also fly off. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. And then I'm also going to do that to the stem as well. All right, so here we have a bunch of faces going on that I've selected, but what's really nice about this technique is since you select specific parts of this geometry, you kind of know how it's going to break apart. So, you know, on your, maybe on your character model, you want the shoes to explode off while he's running or something like that. Um, and so you can really select different faces and pieces of parts of this geometry to make this effect work versus sometimes I've had bad luck with really trying to harness uh, a soft body simulation or a cloth simulation. And so what you wanna do from here is I'm going to right click and go down to disconnect. Let me go ahead and turn this garage shading off. So it still preserves the group of the object, but as you can see, I can actually slide it off of here. And then I'm going to do that for the stem as well. Disconnect. And as you can see, you get a really faceted look to this thing. So that's why I was saying, you know, even if I put this inside of a um, subdivision surface, 
you get a really faceted look to this thing. So you don't really want to start out with this geometry and that's why we're going to kind of show the clean pumpkin first and then really quickly switch to our pumpkin that is exploding. And so from here, I'm going to uncheck our subdivision surfaces and I'm going to go over to our body and instead of using any type of tag on this, any type of simulation tag, like a cloth object or a soft body tag, we're going to use a really standard C4D deformer called a jiggle deformer. And we're gonna stack that under the body at first and then eventually we'll do the stem. So I'm just gonna turn the stem off for now. And what a jiggle deformer normally is, is you know if I set a Y animation position on this thing, and I hit play, you get a little jiggle. That's all on the surface it seems like this thing is for, right? It's kind of like a delay effector for cloner objects. Um, it just gives it a jiggle. You can change the settings, make this more or less extreme. Um, but overall, that's all you'd think it was for. But what's really cool is it has a forces tab inside of it. So you can basically use the properties of this effector that are very dynamic feeling but not simulation level dynamic and actually use forces to add some stuff to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna undo that little animation I had going on and I'm going to add some forces. So if I go up to simulate forces, I'm going to add an attractor. Again, I'm on R21, so a lot of you might be on newer or older. Uh, they're all there, it's just relayed out a little differently. So I'm gonna grab this attractor object. I'm going to grab a turbulence force. And then I'm also going to grab gravity. And on this attractor, what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna put the strength negative so it's kinda of pushing everything away from its center and that'll create our explosion effect. So let's do like negative 600 and then on turbulence strength um let's put that up to 100 for now and then on scale you know we don't want that to be too small so let's turn that up to about 80 and then in the jiggle deformer oh and gravity we'll just leave it 250 right now so in the jiggle deformer in the forces tab let's put our attractor then our turbulence and our gravity. And so if I play this right now, it's just kind of undulating, doing something a little funky, not quite jiggling like you normally would notice. And you can see the little splits where we had our geometry cuts happen um, are starting to show. And so let's drop stiffness down to one, structural down to one, and drag down to zero. See what happens then. Okay, and there we go. We got some craziness going on. I'm gonna turn our subdivision surface on so we can see what that's looking like. You can see it's kind of these cloth piece effects. And this is what I'm talking about. If you would go really, really intensely uh, high geometry, you could get a lot of smaller tears, a lot of pieces and parts going on here. Um, versus mine kind of look like, you know, rectangular sheets happening right now. I think I want to change our turbulence. Maybe a little less intense so it's not kind of flailing about at the end. I want to change the scale up a little bit more. Uh, yeah, that's feeling better. It's feeling pretty good. As you notice, the attractor is kind of at the bottom here. Same with all of these. So I need to actually move these up and center them because that does affect how this works. There we go. Now it's way more exploding from the center. I'm going to knock the gravity down, see what happens. Maybe do 100. Let's do two for structural. Keep it together a little bit more. There we go. So you can see if I change structural up, like if I put to like 50, 
it tries to maintain, like you can really see it's trying to maintain this center kind of pumpkin cutout piece versus being way too floppy. So a lot of this, that's the fun of it. You know, you can set this up and you can just set it exactly how you want to. Um, you can animate all of these things. I'm gonna put structural back to like two again. I want it to kind of get spindly and drawn out like it's doing there. Okay, I'm gonna extend my timeline as well. So I'm just gonna set this to like 500 just to see what's fully happening. So you can kind of see it keeps going back in on itself over and over. One thing I forgot to do is um, in object, there's kind of an advanced tab. And basically it tries to do iterations and springs here. It basically shows how many springs, how many iterations of this. And if you knock this springs down to zero, you can see it immediately kind of unlocks itself. Basically the jiggle deformer, you know, it's a very straightforward effector. And so it's kind of saying, oh, okay, in this, whatever motion I'm seeing, um, you want a spring type event on that. So here it's primarily set to four. So it kind of keeps going back and forth on itself um, and it's really delayed. So if you just set that to zero and then iterations, you can just kind of mess with. So here you can see if I just set this to one, um, it almost has more of like a slow-mo effect. It keeps it way more together. It kind of stretches the whole object as a whole versus if I set this to like 20, hit play. It's a very fast explosion. You can see that main body doesn't spend a lot of time in the air stretching. Um, instead, it just kind of blows apart and falls to the ground. I think I'm gonna do like 10. Give a little more life to it. Okay, so this is just kind of a fun stylized way to make an explosion effect without going through the hassle of full dynamics. You still get to leverage forces. You have a cache still, um, but it's a lot more simplified. What I want to do here now is I just want to drag this jiggle effector under the top stem and turn that back on. Let's just see what that looks like. <laughs> kind of blows it off the top up into the air. Looking pretty good. Okay, now from here what we want to do is we want to turn this clean pumpkin on. So our jiggle deformer starts around frame 20. So use our handy dandy display tags under render tags. So turn on display tag, visibility, check 100 on, on frame 20, on frame 19, I'm going to turn it off. And then do the same thing for pumpkin clean, but the opposite, the so render tag, Display, visibility 100 on frame 19, and then zero on frame 20. And so now we have our really clean pumpkin, and then when I hit play, it will switch over with those visibility tags uh, to the exploding pumpkin. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You get this really cool effect. Again, you might not necessarily think on the surface that the jiggle deformer can do something like this. All right, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and can use this in your personal projects in some way or another. If not, you guys got a free pumpkin model, I guess, if you're following along. If you like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would help us out a ton. Feel free to leave any comments in the comments section below. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. All right, I'll see you next time and happy Halloween.